to say. I think a limb, it might be one of the best grasses out there. Let me show you. Look at that. Okay, it's a low traffic area. I'm still working on a on that little spot up there, but this is fantastic. It's really dense. I've taken it quite low today, um, which is okay for a limb every now and then. But look at this, it's in the shade most of the day. The areas that get quite a lot of sun are just thicker, but then they also need more water. You can see it when they don't get water for long periods. But um, I would say, and also because the palm trees and all the tree litter that I get here, this longer grass is nice because it hides a lot of the mess. So I don't have to try and keep it clean quite as much. Uh, plus, using a rotary on this, no problem. So you can use a cheap mower. You don't have to mow very often. You barely use any water. I've only ever put down two, three, so this whole year, this, this section's only got one application, half rate of two, three, two, and um, superphosphate. Nothing else, no nitrogen, nothing. So, yeah, it is pretty darn impressive. Okay, so today's video is going to be uh, just a bit of a, a quick mow for me because I've got people coming now over the weekend and I'm going to do it with the rotary and I am going to bag clippings because it is the grass has grown quite long. I've left it for a few days now trying out a few other things. The main lawn is looking rather long, full of leaves, but good all in all. And now that there hasn't been any fertilizer on here for about two plus weeks you can see the differences in the dark green versus the medium green of the, of the Kakuyu and the Bermuda. Uh, there's two grasses you need to keep the Bermuda lower than the Kakuyu if you're going to mix them. Uh, in my case I like the darker green. But yeah that's how it looks at this point. Yeah and these Bora bees are back. But okay just uh, as I come off my stoop you can clearly see this is now the Bermuda you can tell the Kakuyu and the other Alem, that is starting to look more like a weed versus the Bermuda. The Bermuda has thickened up a lot uh, and this is not even some of the best that's in the yard. This is just straight off the landing so this gets very high traffic. Dogs and children and, and adults and everyone get this. Um, so yeah, definitely that is the Kakuyu side, that is the Bermuda side. You can clearly tell even up close that's more like a medium green and very untidy when it gets long. That is a nice dark rich green and is not that untidy when it gets long. It's just, and it's not even like abnormally puffy and it feels much more comfortable under your bare feet. And yeah, you can, you can tell that's Kakuyu trying to grow through there. And then that's the Bermuda and then that's Alem, 100%. The other grasses look more like weeds, in my opinion. But anyway, we'll give this a shave and see what happens. Okay, I just got mowing on the main section here. I just want to show you. So this is Alem grass. And this is where the Kakuyu is coming in. You can see where that's, where it's, that's what's getting sculpted. Then you move over into the Bermuda sections and you can actually tell the Bermuda's in some cases not even being cut. It's so much lower and closer to the ground that there you sculpt Kukuyu because of how fast and how thick it grows. But I could theoretically get even lower on the Bermuda and still have a thicker, uh, stronger mat. So if you look at the type of Bermuda, excuse all the hardy hairs, if you look at the thicker Bermuda here, um, that's much nicer. I'd just rather not have that in it which is Kukuyu. Uh, and I've got to say, the sculpting, that's Kukuyu. Same heart all over here, that's all Alem. The Alem doesn't sculpt as poorly as the Kukuyu. So the Kukuyu is still worse. I think I'm choosing sides here.
Okay, so I had to remove the bin because uh, there was just too much clippings. So one little trick that I can teach you guys is take the bin off, mow a couple of passes first, so that you break that all up, and then bin it afterwards, and you'll find you'll have half the number of bins easily. So you can tell, uh, and this is also a good tip that I can give anyone with any lawn. You need to learn how to read your lawn. So for me, I'm busy mowing today, and I can see that there's still a lot of areas, even whilst scalping, that just aren't getting hit, and that's mostly the Bermuda. So I'm reading my grass, and it wants to be sculpted, which means it's going to look a little bit crummy now after this, but in a week or so, it is going to look fantastic. I'm certain of it. There's enough rain right now. There's still quite a lot of fertilizer and stuff going in here from those liquid applications previously in the last week or two. I think two weeks ago was last, so I could perhaps top it up again soon. But I'll leave it again before topping it up. Let's just let it take a bit of strain now. Also, if with all this rain, if there was a chance that fungus was going to be coming up now, it would have been now while the grass is long. So cut it short. Leave it to dry out, so I'm not going to water it tonight. Leave it to dry out over the next couple of days and then come back and check for fungus and or treat for that. And yeah, as you can tell, that's a, that's a lot that I'm taking off right now. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's the first rough pass. It's nice and low. But the quality of gra the grass is looking very, very nice. Uh, and the Bermuda is definitely taking over. You can see this is all Bermuda, all of this. And the stuff that looks like weeds now is Kukuyu. So that's Kukuyu. And this is all Bermuda. Let me get up closer. You can see even with that, um, you know, I'm putting a lot of strain under the, you know, onto the Kukuyu. And the Bermuda, some of the tips haven't even been taken off. But, well, there's a weed, just a basic broadleaf, but okay, we'll deal with it another day. But I think what I'm going to do, call this my Friday the 13th, almost sculpt. I am most likely going to go over it again tomorrow. I think I'm going to go over it again one more time now, but my camera keeps cutting out because of the heat. Um, but I think it can go over at the same height on the mower, go over it a second time. If I go down lower on the mower, I am probably going to cause too much scalping and then I'm going to have little bald spots before I get the grass to where I want it. It is, it's nearly, it's nearly right. So, without the bin, I'm going to go over it a second time. I may film that, I may not film it. Then I will most likely go over it again with the bin. Possibly raise the height of cut to avoid any potential boo-boos, especially when the bin fills up with all the clippings. It's going to weigh down the mower and then you'll have scalping again. So lift the mower, put the bag on, the bin on, go again, pick up all your clippings. Um, around the trees, I still haven't worked on my little area over there yet, but around the trees, I'm just going to go over it at a higher setting, probably when I put the bin back on. Because this height, I absolutely cannot do the LM at this height. How this is doing it, I, I don't know. I, I think it's the car wash, actually. But uh, you have yet to test that. So yeah. I will go over that area now, do like a circle around it at a higher cut for the LM just to keep the LM there because I went over one little pass and I saw I was definitely too low for that area under the under the trees but yeah. So I must say I do believe that if you don't have high traffic in your yard you should seriously consider LM. Um, barely any maintenance, much less water than Kikuyu, more than buffalo but much less than Kikuyu, uh, probably around the same or even less than Bermuda. Um, and it looks neat. If it's in full sun, it's going to be just as thick as Kikuyu and Bermuda and all these other nicer or, let's say, more popular grass types. But it is worth it. Uh, Alem is worth it. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is what we've got. A nice borderline scalp slightly more than I did a few weeks back but this is also 
something to, to discuss about Kokuyu and Bermuda anyway. As you can see here, this is a good example of how Kokuyu is rubbish in, compared to, in comparison to Bermuda, but also quite cool, but it's a very good example of how it uh, takes over. So that thick stolon, that runner, that is the boss versus all other grass types. Uh, if Kokuyu is long, it will eat everything. It will take down trees and buildings and everything. Now that stuff, Bermuda, runs horizontally first. I brought this up in a previous video. That's my observation. It runs that way first, which is why it's better for lawns, in my opinion. Um, short lawns. Kokuyu is great for when you need to get uh, when you want a longer lawn or where you've got very uneven ground you can mask it with good kukuyu. So kukuyu looks like that. You can tell in between here there is good healthy Bermuda. So if I just do that a few more times that kukuyu will die because it won't like having that effect happen to it which is my intention at this point but I'll do it bit by bit and uh, yeah that's now what we've got. So yeah I'm very happy with uh, with the result that I've got so far and uh, I must say that I definitely think that I'm going to go in the direction of Bermuda um, as the main lawn back here uh, and then in the winter time I think I might convert over to ryegrass or do that ryegrass overseeding that I see is actually a, a common thing in the northern hemisphere uh, well the, the warmer regions in the northern hemisphere the guys seem to do that I think that might be my way forward because um, me dumbing down the different grass types, I thought, yes, man, rye looks fantastic. Um, Kentucky bluegrass looks quite good too, but it looks like it needs more to make it look really pristine. And uh, even though it's a little bit better as far as thickening up, it you know can actually tuft up itself and grow thicker on its own. That's quite cool, and I can understand why local guys would want to do that. Um, and it does make sense; it's a bloody marvelous lawn um, grass type. But I don't think that our climate is really for it, um, unless you've got a bit of shade or like a cooler area. Um, anyway, so for me it was going to be ryegrass because of the way it looks, that green, that I want that. Uh, but Bermuda has got quite a nice dark color to it as well, and when you look after it, it's pretty awesome. And, uh, and now for you Kukuyu guys, you can tell, this is, I told you before, more than 50% of the day, my grass is in shade under here and that's only only for like two meters that is alim and there's kukuyu in there now i must tell you that i would say 80 percent of what's up here is now bermuda because it's getting strength out of the out of the sun the kukuyu is actually taking strain uh, versus the bermuda in the sun the kukuyu in the shade though that is the longest grass and you can tell that from the grass clippings uh, and when you walk on it, you can feel that the grass is very thick and dense. So, Kakuyu can grow in the shade. It is not just the shade that is causing, potentially, wherever it may be watching this video and you've got issues with Kakuyu in the shade. It's not the shade necessarily. I mean, if it's very shady, of course. But it's not just the shade that is causing you problems. It's the trees sapping the nutritional value and or water uh, from your Kakuyu. And I just want to say, um, when I stopped recording because my camera kept on overheating is that where I stopped was I had done the first pass without the bin or bag depending on type, what type of mower you have did the first pass um, at a low setting walked slowly did a second pass also again without the bag but in the opposite direction to what I did first uh, and I walked very slow I found that because my ground is a bit uneven um, that is where you pick up the, the scuffing that you get from your rotary mowers. Now, I must say, um, it's, it's more the uneven ground and the bouncing. It's actually the bounce that causes that bang. Uh, because I've done that at, at a higher setting than this before and got you know more scuff marks as opposed to what I did now. Um, this is just the kukuyu that you're seeing behind you that's got that little bit of a scathe on the top of it the bermuda that's underneath that little brownish area right now is perfectly green some of it's not even cut so it's definitely not that um, your rotary can't get that low it's that your ground needs to be perfectly smoothened firstly secondly you need to walk much slower third your blade needs to be sharp um, and you need to have a dense mat of lawn in the first place so you can't go and try and do this with a bit of a wussy lawn you've got to you've got to you've got to beef it up before you 
you try and get down that low. Um, and also don't go that low if you don't have sufficient sun. And then the third pass that I did, uh, I was going to lift the height of the machine, but I didn't. Uh, because I realized I could still go down just slightly lower. So I relied on what I said previously, where you must actually lift the machine again if you put the bag or the box back on uh, the bin. Because when the bin fills up, it's going to weigh down the machine and you're going you're gonna to get down lower. I decided that's what I'm going to do with my third pass. So the third pass actually went back the same way as what I did on the first pass uh, and picked up all the clippings. Um, but my advice to you is don't do that. Uh, rather do uh, three passes, maybe do your first pass at a relatively low height, a second pass one notch lower or a half a notch lower, um, and then a third pass again at the exact same position uh, or a higher position again, just vacuum up. And if you've got a nice strong uh, leaf blower or leaf vac or something like that, then you could use that instead of the, instead of the um, lawn mower again, but for me the mower is fine. So yeah, I think, I think we're learning some things here in this yard. Um, yeah, please stay tuned for some more videos and we'll catch you guys again on the next one. Cheers.